the morning. So without much ado, I call Bidyut Bose to bring his panel and start the panel discussion. Thank you. And good afternoon. Um, much of this conference is focused on the applications of yoga and yoga therapeutics on our health, on our health and well-being. And yet, given Swami Vivekananda's injunctions around the application of self-realization and application and selfless service, the question perhaps is, what does yoga have to do with other major domains of social function? Can it help our children exceed academically, help kids stay in school and out of trouble? Does it have anything to do with violence prevention to make our communities a little safer? Does it have anything to do with a global sustainability to create sustainable communities to be able to keep this fragile planet going a little bit longer than perhaps it's, uh, it's going to be if we're headed the way we are? And so this session is an exploration of that. Not just healthcare, but perhaps education, violence prevention, global sustainability, looking at applications of the foundations of a practice that can be so profound and so powerful, it can help us not only transform ourselves, but change the world around us. Um, a very brief uh, uh, collection, uh, the summary findings from a little survey that went out to participants about their perception of uh, uh, the application of yoga for social change. Thank you. So earlier today, we did a survey among all the participants um, about social transformation. And uh, I'm here to present the results of the survey. So the first question, uh, as you can see, is was yoga is mostly practiced without emphasis on philosophy. And now the word yoga is being replaced by mindfulness to remove the baggage of religion. What do you think of this? Will this reduce the social impact of yoga? Uh, a lot of people said, yes, yoga should be maintained authentically to be effective. Uh, a couple of people said they didn't know this was happening. Uh, a couple of people also said, no, yoga and, and, or mindfulness should not matter. Um, very few people said maybe. So some of, the key, uh, some of the good comments are highlighted over there from the results. Feel free to read them. The second question was, Non-communicable diseases are on the rise, um, like heart disease, asthma, uh, cancer, and conventional medicine has hit a brick wall. There's a pressing need to move towards integrated yoga therapy and Ayurveda medical practice. What do you think? Uh, so a lot of people said, I strongly agree. Time-tested ancient health practices have to be taught in medical schools. A couple people said they generally agree, and they gave some comments as well. Um, some of the comments there are highlighted, and very few people chose the other options. The next question was, modern education system does not put enough emphasis on morals and ethics. Pressure to produce results causes enormous stress in children. Should holistic yoga practices, um, such as pranayama, meditation, and philosophy, be introduced into the K through 12 education system? And a lot of people said they strongly agree. Uh, they said a yoga is a spiritual practice that builds character. Um, uh, many people also said, I generally agree with the problem, with, not with the solution. And they uh, gave comments. So uh, specifically for one, one comment was, uh, at the age of kindergarten, they won't understand philosophy and other such things. Um, at such ages, they need more love, patience, and compassion. Maybe these things can come through yoga, um, but not the formal yoga that usually comes to mind. Uh, and the last question, or that, sorry, that was the last question. So hopefully that gives you um, a, a feel of how uh, people feel about this issue, uh, about different aspects of this issue. One skip, oh, I see. So there was a fourth question. <laughs> um, this one? OK, so modern society is focused more on rights than responsibilities. And the burden of family and elder care has fallen to the state. Uh, will adoption of yoga as a self-transformative practice alleviate these problems? 
And uh, a lot of, most people said they strongly agree that yoga transforms people into more caring and responsible citizens. And a lot of people also said they generally agree. And their comments uh, about generally agreeing was that, were that um, if yoga is practiced only as a physical practice, then this change might not happen. And this links back to the first question. But if yoga is practiced with authenticity, then the transformation will happen, although it might happen slowly. So this, uh, this survey hopefully gave you an idea of how people feel about these issues. Thank you. On to the panel. I'd like to invite uh, our three panelists uh, to come up to the podium. Um, Swami Sita, uh, Sri Raghuram, and uh, uh, Sri Amrita Suryananda. Please come join us uh, on stage. Thank you. Great. So uh, as we begin this conversation, first of all, uh, a pleasure and a privilege to have three distinguished panelists with us. You have their information both from the initial introduction as well as uh, in the brochure, so I won't spend time on that. We'll use this time optimally just to give you a quick sense for uh, the background information on that video you just saw. Um, Niroga has been around for about seven and a half years. Uh, currently serving a couple thousand people a week uh, in schools and alternative schools and juvenile halls and jails and rehab centers and uh, uh, senior centers and cancer hospitals and so on. Um, engaged in really looking at application uh, in education and healthcare and violence prevention and so on through direct service, through trainings, uh, through uh, research and now moving into uh, policy and advocacy work. It's interesting that we are here gathered at the Jewish Community Center. Just last night, I received an email from a yoga group in Palestine. And they are working with their Ministry of Education, uh, saying, uh, we really need you here. We see that your work is evidence-based, it's trauma-informed, and that's exactly what we need in our schools. And as I'm reading this email, thinking about going out to Palestine, thinking not just the school children, not just the teachers and the parents around them, but can you imagine tough negotiations happening uh, between the Israelis and the Palestinians with the top leaders, the top politicians doing a little bit of, you know, systematic breathing, a bit of pranayama, perhaps a little bit of mindful movement, a little bit of centering before they start these negotiations? What could be possible? Yes. And so we dream about these possibilities as I welcome our three panelists to frame the conversation, to be able to provide you with a little bit of time for... Uh, a question and answer, I sent them three questions and I requested that they keep their answers really succinct. And so this will be a test of whether they actually are going to follow through on those requested <laughs> instructions, active listening. So let us start with the first question. And the question was, what is one key influence or incident in your personal life that propelled you into a life of service? Swami Sita. Om Namah Shivaya. Um, I was a social worker, a community organizer in the government of Quebec, uh, Montreal, Canada. And um, I tried to help all kinds of groups, all kinds of uh, problems, social problems. And uh, I was burned out. So then uh, I learned that um, to help others, you have to help yourself first. So I learned yoga mm -hmm. so that I can bring energy and clarity. And also I learned that um, uh, peace to be lasting has to come with God. So social services without God, um, come to an end. It doesn't, it doesn't really address the main problem that uh, creates the suffering, which is the disconnection with uh, our own divinity. So that's why I become a sannyasi, and I become a, a worker for God, because I believe that it needs to be together. The social activism or social services need to come with uh, spiritual practices. Beautiful, thank you. Shri Raghuram. The question is, something in your life, uh, in your formative years, that propelled you to do the work you do, to dedicate your life to service? 
<clears throat> Sant Kabir said something that is when this <clears throat> a grain of when the grain got caught between both the platens it has to get grounded the same way that on one side my brother in law is professor satyanarayan shastri i said who is our mentor teacher and all that on the other side my another brother in law is professor is dr nagendra i am caught in between both of them so what else can i do <laughs> but that apart it was swami vivekananda's teachings which really inspired me and i went basically for the sake of my own finding peace within me finding the tranquility and that whatever that's supposed to be the spiritual gains and goals and all that that's within me but then in the process once i go through all that i found that my ability to communicate my ability to console people seemed to be much better and that really has inspired me and fortunately for me that i landed in a group which has got the similar kind of a attitude and approach and heart and that really gave me a great opportunity to get into that so that's what really made me to go ahead in this direction thank you uh sri amrita suryananda por todos os motivos em primeiro lugar porque acho que tinha um pouquinho de inteligência for all the motives in first place because i think i had a little bit of intelligence era um ginasta mas a ginástica apesar de ganhar medalhas na ginástica não me satisfazia i practiced gymnastics but although i won medals practicing gymnastics it didn't fulfill me era um nadador de sucesso mas a natação apesar de exigir muita respiração não me ensinava a respirar I would swim successfully, but although I trained my breathing in uh, in swimming, it uh, was not the the right. It was not enough. Sempre tive boas notas uh, a estudar, mas sempre percebi que havia uma vozinha dentro de mim que era muito mais inteligente que eu. I would always have good grades, but I always felt felt that I had an inner voice inside of me that was more intelligent than me. Era um jovenzinho e já dava catequese na igreja católica. I was a young man, I would study religious in the Catholic Church. Mas sempre percebi que a luz vinha do Oriente, onde o sol nascia. But I always understood that light would come from the from india from the other place on the sol nascia where the sun would rise por todos esses motivos porque a india era a pátria da sabedoria for all of these motives and because india was the motherland of yoga e porque o yoga tinha os yama e niyama and because yoga had yama and nyama ao contrário do que diziam são outros 10 mandamentos um, uh, being different from what they said uh, uh, regarding the 10 uh, testimonies Command, of the catholic 10 10 mandamentos 10 commandments statements yes. não era verdade os yama e nyama eram uma porta para para o céu para entrar no samadhi that was not true because Yamin Yama was a path to go to Samadhi. Portanto, por todos esses motivos, tinha que começar a estudar e praticar yoga. So because of all those motives, I had to start and study and practicing yoga. E depois porque tive sorte. And then because I was lucky. Porque encontrei um guruji que me amava e me distinguia. I found a guruji that loved me. Distinguia and that distinguished me no shivananda ashram divine at, life society in rishikesh krishna nanda ji my guru ji yeah. estes foram os motivos porque eu me dediquei à carreira e ao yoga 
These were the motives why I um, dedicated Stand. myself to this career. According to those ends. For, for over 42 years ago. Thank you. Thank you. So getting a sense for what motivates us individually, after all, if we really believe that social transformation needs personal transformation as a necessary condition. And now all of us are engaged in <coughs> trying to change the world around us or working with different populations in different settings. The question is, what makes your particular approach unique and distinctive? What is a key differentiator in the approach that you bring and your organization brings to social transformation? So, Sri Raghuram. Basically, to start with, I have taken up yoga for my personal development and growth. And once this is emphasized, sincerely, seriously, this is taken up, I can see that it can influence that various areas, like for example, the health and then family harmony and then social harmony. At all these levels that it can really influence an individual development is the thing which really helps the better way of dealing with the world outside. And once it so happens that when once I turn this whole thing as an individual spiritual growth and development, then I could see that very easily that I could connect across the borders of the country, borders of the religion, borders of language and all these kind of things. And that's how I could see that the ideas that I carried with me, particularly about Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads and then all the texts of yoga, whether the people belong to either Turkey or Germany or Austria or Switzerland, anywhere that I go, I see that they are totally 100% they could accept these ideas and get benefited by that. So that's one of the reasons why I thought that the social transformation has to be in the hands of the holistic approach of yoga. Thank you. Um, Sri Suryananda. Yoga is based on Samkhya. Yoga is based on Samkhya. E hoje os cientistas dizem o mesmo que o Samkhya diz há milhares de anos. And today the scientists say, say the same as the Samkhya says for over thousands of years. No instante zero, no instante do Big Bang, at the instant zero at the Big Bang at the Maha Om, todos estávamos reunidos numa pequena dimensão, a chamada dimensão de Planck. All were united in a small dimension, which was called the Planck dimension. Nesse momento, todos éramos um só. On that moment, all of us were only one. Todas as almas, todos os seres, todas as coisas. All the soul, souls, all the things, all the, all the beings. E também, nesse instante mágico, já tudo estava programado. And also in that magical instant, everything was already programmed. Uh, todas as constantes que vinham inseridas no futuro do universo estavam criadas. All the constants that would be built on the future of the universe were already programmed. O próprio tempo era diferente, era o chamado tempo imaginário, que even, é a descrição de Purusha. Even the time was different, it was the imaginary time as it was called, it was the time of Purusha. Simultaneamente, os cientistas também falam na incerteza, Sim. uma teoria que Heisenberg definiu. Simultaneously, scientists uh, uh, talk about an uncertainty, uh, the uncertainty of Heisenberg. O, o, O princípio da incerteza é o princípio do livre arbítrio. The principle of uncertainty is the principle of the free choice. Então vejamos, nós já fomos todos um só. So let's see, we were all one. E continuamos a ser um só. And we continue to be all one. 
depois temos um livre-arbítrio e podemos fazer da nossa vida tudo o que quisermos estão a ver, podemos ser grandiosos so you can see we are great. podemos fazer tudo o que nunca foi feito we can do what has never been done before. temos um livro em branco por escrever we have a white book that is not been written. e podemos escrevê-lo em letras douradas And we can read it with golden words. e depois como já fomos um só podemos ainda hoje partilhar as nossas almas e porque nós éramos já um All of us were already one. We can share our souls. E podemos ajudar os outros. And we can help each other. E, e estamos a ajudar a nós próprios. And we are also helping us. E depois o grande cosmos é constituído por aquilo que já foi muito pequeno. And then the great cosmos is made of the things that were already little. E nós somos microcosmos dentro desse grande cosmos. And we are a microcosmos inside of that big cosmos. E está previsto que vai começar a Satya Yuga, a era do aquário. And it's predicted that it's coming to be the Satya Yuga, e, the aquarium era. E que vamos sair destes tempos de escuridão, de treva, de guerra, And de morte. And that we are coming out of these darkness times of death, of war. Então o que nós propomos é que toda a humanidade pratique yoga. So what we propose is that all humanity should practice yoga. E que sinta a magia que o yoga nos transforma. And that feel the magic of what yoga transform us. Nós temos um super ser dentro de nós. Because we have a super being inside of us. E esse super ser vai fazer com que todos construamos uma fraternidade humana. And that super being inside of us will make us uh, make a humanity a uh, uma fraternidade a, fr a human fraternity. E vai fazer com que seja importante nós sentirmos grandiosos. And will make us uh, to feel that it's important for us to be great. Uh, e vivermos de acordo com isso. To achieve greatness and to live according to that greatness. Então o que nós propusemos foi que se criasse um dia mundial do yoga. So what we have proposed is to create a world yoga day. Um dia no dia maior do ano, no dia da luz. On the biggest day of the year, on the day of light. Que é o oposto da treva. Which is the opposite of darkness. Que é o conceito de budi, de inteligência, de centelha divina. Which is the concept of budi, of intelligence. Centelha of divina. the sparkle of the divine spark. Se todos vivemos dessa maneira, sentimos uma felicidade, uma glória dentro de nós, if, que é o maior sentimento que podemos experimentar. If we all of us Uh, feel this way, we'll feel greatness, we'll feel happiness, we'll feel that glory inside of us. E isso é o que nos dá o yoga. And that is what yoga gives to Transforma us. o ser mais pequeno, mais mesquinho como eu era. It transforms the smallest human being as I was. Uh, numa pessoa melhor, in num a better ser person, melhor. In a better human being. Então nós vemos a humanidade como um todo. So we see humanity as a whole. Achamos whole. que não são só as multinacionais que devem ver uh, o planeta Terra como um todo. We think that not only multinationals should be the ones that see the planet Earth as just one. Nós defendemos a multinacional dos seres humanos. We want the multinational of human beings. Da fraternidade. Of fraternity. E por isso achamos que todos devem praticar yoga. And because of that, we think that all should practice yoga. Não importa qual é o motivo. It does not matter what is the motive. Porque estão saudáveis. Because they are health. Porque they estão, have health. Porque estão doentes. Because they are ill. Porque estão insatisfeitos. Because they are not satisfied. Porque estão perdidos. Because they are lost. Porque querem o samadhi. Because they want samadhi. O que importa é que comecem. What matters is that you start practicing. Porque rapidamente a centelha divina em nós vem ao de cima. Because the divine spark in us will come out. E isso é o futuro da humanidade. And that is the future of humanity. E pelo nosso livre arbítrio podemos fazê-lo já. And with our free choice we can start doing it right now. E descobrimos que o yoga é a solução para todos os problemas da humanidade. And we discover that yoga is the solution for all humanity problems. É isso que a Confederação Portuguesa do Yoga propõe. This is what the Yoga Portuguese Confederation proposes. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. So let me see it here. So you said to be brief, so I would um, <laughs> summarize it in three points. Um, the approach that we follow is the teaching of Swami Shivananda of the synthesis of yoga. 
So the synthesis of yoga is the combination between karma yoga, which he put first, bhakti yoga, raja yoga, and hatha yoga is included with raja yoga, and jnana yoga. So how to bring these um, practices, because yoga is translated in terms of practices, something that you can do, and how to bring it in daily life. So that's the, the first thing. So Swami Shivananda make a schedule so that we can do it. We can include these activities, little chanting, meditation, hatha yoga, pranayam, karma yoga, and, um, and study in the daily life. So that's number one. The number two is the teaching of Swami Vishnu Devanji that uh, make it very practical and uh, bring yoga in our uh, daily life, but in our lifestyle, how we can include the, f the five <coughs> points, which is do the asanas, proper asanas, every day so that you can, your energy flow, and there's nothing to say, really, when your energy flow, and then pranayama, proper breathing, proper relaxation means learn to uh, relax, not to be stressed, and to let go and um, um, be positive. And then prop, uh, diet, a vegetarian diet is one very important point. And the last is positive thinking and meditation. So that is part of daily life, uh, to practice positive thinking and also uh, meditation. So that is the second point <coughs> that we teach. And the third one is um, the idea of unity and diversity, the idea of how to bring Vedanta, which is the, um, so we follow the teaching of Shankaracharya, Advaita Vedanta, and uh, um, how to bring this in daily life also. That means how to uh, see oneself in all, see the oneness in the diversity, how to respect the diversity, but see at the same time the oneness that link all of us together. So that's also, um, we need to practice in daily life. So the way how it works in the <coughs> ashram is that the door is open for everyone. And we, Swami Vishnu Devanji, especially make sure that, you know, all the different cultures are mixed, different ages, different uh, races, different groups, different um, skills different bodily conditions. So we accept everybody and everyone go to the same kind of training with the, <coughs> with the idea that if you have a glimpse of that piece and that unit, if you can create that, that unit in time that is perfect because everyone tune and is able to experience that, that oneness even for a few days, even for a week, a month, so like this, so then they can remember. It's like tuning back to the, um, to the note that is deep within them, that is that, uh, that consciousness of unity and of divinity that link all of us. So to create the environment that can make people experience that even for a short period of time, and then know that when they will go, they will bring that <coughs> to their environment. So Swami, um, uh, Vishnu Devanji put a lot of emphasis on um, training the new leaders of the world. Means, you know, yamas, the yamas, and, and the training in the daily life. So that these people will become um, catalysts, they become, um, you can say, social, the, the people that bring social change. So that's how. So far, the organization has trained 30,000 yoga teachers that um, follow that modality. Thank you. Um, in the interest of time, uh, uh, we'll fold the third question into addressing some of the questions that are coming from the audience. If there are some burning questions uh, that you still would like to have the panel address, feel free to uh, fill out one of these cards and we'll try to see if we can get to it. Um, from the ones that we have, I'll just direct uh, a specific question, uh, given the background of our panelists, to each particular person, and let them address uh, the question from the audience, if that's okay. Um, so, 
given that uh, SVASA is doing so much work in schools in the attempt of transformation of the education system and making education and so on, here's a question that uh, perhaps you could address Sri Raghuram. Is there any work going on around application of yoga to decrease bullying in schools? Essentially, kids bullying other kids, uh, creating an environment which is not conducive uh, to a positive learning environment. <clears throat> Basically, we try to give in the schools the students the idea of having greater fraternity and then having an idea of warmth and uh, regard for the other student. And this kind of values that we are trying to bring about with the help of uh, the ideas of yama, niyama, etc., and all those things which Swami Sita Ramanandji was telling. And uh, hoping that it, with an idea that it can really help to be able to, uh, the seniors to be able to receive the juniors much more uh, friendly and then healthy way. Not only that, the uh, strong can help the weak to see that they're integrated together. This is the way that we have been doing. In fact, one such experiment that we have done particularly in that direction, not, reg not the case of bullying, but basically that when we introduced this yoga to the blind children in the blind school in Bangalore, then we could see that their mutual cooperation and the way that they try to live together, it has enormously improved the whole quality of the school has really gone up very well with that. This is one incident. Mm -hmm. Another incident is that in the uh, tribal schools in the case of Arunachal Pradesh and uh, Assam and all that, these are the places where that uh, the students felt much more connected after having given this particular program because the students there would come from different villages, one or two students come from uh, one village, another couple of students come from different village. So there was kind of lacking of this bondage between them. But uh, the yoga classes, that is what basically brought them together much better for two reasons. One is that in yoga, there is nothing like a competition. But whereas in the other subjects and studying in the school, there was so much of competition that was introduced and trying to see that we should be better than somebody else and all that, that used to be there. But that got eliminated with the help of this. And they were in the same platform. In fact, this is what I was also trying to impress upon in uh, one of the uh, UNO UN conferences, that is uh, education conferences, where in Uruguay it was there. And at that time, uh, they wanted to bring about sports in the schools. And the whole discussion was about bringing about all the competitive sports like tennis and this and that, which has a lot of investment. At that time, I was suggesting the UNO that you should try to think of bringing in yoga because there is no competition involved and then more of uh, total personality development that was there. I was trying to impress upon, but of course the ideas were not really taken very well at that time. But I'm sure that this can definitely do to bring about a better environment and atmosphere in the schools. Great. Thank you. Um, Sri Suryananda, a uh, direct question from the audience. Do you think yoga was forgotten uh, between 100 BC and 1983? Or was it just a new introduction to the West? <laughs> Can you repeat the question, yes. if yoga was? Um, it's as if, the gist of the question is that it's as if the West has just discovered yoga. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, you know, thousands of years have gone, up, gone by in between, and the West was unaware, so. Clark, see. Uh, of course, yoga is a hope for the West. 
os grandes líderes espirituais do Ocidente the great spiritual leaders of the West foram aprender à Índia. Uh, came to uh, learn from India. E essa parte é escondida na Europa And e no Ocidente. And that part is um, not written in Europe. Nobody knows about it. Mas agora faz-se sabendo. But now we are starting to know about it. Uh, o grande reservatório da espiritualidade da humanidade é Bharat. The big reserv reservoir of wisdom of humanity is Bharata. E o resto até agora tem sido simples imitações. And the rest until now has been just uh, simple imitations. E por isso sim, o, Oriente, o Ocidente está a renascer para a luz. And because of that, the West is being born to the light. Graças ao Yoga e à Índia, estamos muito gratos Due à Índia to por isso. Yoga and to India, and we are very grateful for that. Essas são as nossas profundas convicções. Those are our profound convictions. Thank you. A question directly addressed to Swami Sita. I love the uh, meditation uh, today, and I enjoyed doing it in a group uh, with that focus. Um, how can I do this alone? How can you suggest a technique for home practice? Um, you need to create your meditation space. That's okay. important. Now we're running out of time. That is private. And um, you need to create an altar, at a point of focus, so you can be inspired. And you need to create a time. That means a fixed time that you can go and dedicate it to meditation. So with time, space, and it will already be helpful. And um, that's it. And then you need to practice daily. So <clears throat> you need to be self self-inspired, but if you create the routine, it will be easier. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question, and I'll try to address this uh, as it relates to some of our programs. Uh, what programs do you have for, uh, for jails and prisons for the inmates? Uh, these need to be organized, and uh, is your organization uh, doing anything about this? And so, uh, just recently, about a year ago, uh, the Sheriff's Department from Alameda County came to us uh, for a proposal, a model, that they could propose to the federal government to help uh, young adults in Santa Rita Jail uh, to get some help both inside the hall and uh, upon re-entry into our communities. So we proposed a model and uh, they got uh, substantial federal funding uh, to basically bring yoga and meditation and breathing techniques both inside Santa Rita Jail separate classes for the men, separate classes for the women, and these are typically in units where they're, you know, uh, low to moderate security. So these people are coming out fairly soon without being in there for too long. And so when they do come out, then we are also there in the community with community classes for the people that are coming out of the jail as well as uh, their family members in the community. And so this is actually being systematically uh, studied and evaluated, and we shall see uh, how this goes. So that's one part of our programs. The other piece is something that's uh, very much our focus. We're looking at older children, often of color, and coming from challenged uh, socioeconomic backgrounds and environments, uh, with a lot of abuse and neglect and crime and violence and guns and gangs and drugs and death all around them. Um, we're also looking at these children who are at high risk of school failure, dropping out of school. They're also at high risk of uh, engaging in crime and violence and entering the juvenile justice system. And so often this is being called the school to prison pipeline. It's becoming a huge national conversation because people are realizing how tremendously expensive this is. If you don't know the magnitude uh, of the expenditures, just to give you some takeaway, uh, the cost, the lifetime cost of a high-risk youth that is perhaps going to be dealing with school failure, substance abuse, uh, addiction, and uh, juvenile delinquency or a life of crime, that has been pegged at about four to seven million dollars. That is one youth. There are about a million youth that are dropping out of school every year, and there are about a million youth that are ending up in juvenile halls. So this school to prison pipeline is absolutely real. And it's costing us hundreds of billions of dollars a year. We are not only in schools and alternative schools where there are some of these highest risk kids, we actually have a huge long running program in Alameda County Juvenile Hall. 
At one time, it was 30 classes a week, and the program was being funded by a large statewide foundation, which basically wanted to do a comprehensive evaluation of this program. And it was done by uh, researchers independently at UC Berkeley and, uh, and other places, and they found two things. They found that we could systematically lower stress. Second, that we could increase emotion regulation. And so you just stop and you think about these two simple findings, and you realize that we have already established connections between chronic stress and uh, the challenges with emotion regulation that affect academic potential, substance abuse, binge eating, psychopathology, interpersonal relationships, optimal emotional responses. That work has already been done. Social psychologists have been writing papers on this for quite a while. If we can show that yoga and breathing techniques and meditation can actually increase emotion regulation and decrease chronic stress, then it seems like there's an obvious inductive connection here that needs to be analyzed. If B affects C and A affects B, then we need to see whether A does indeed connect to C. And if we can really do that, we have profound implications for the society where these foundational practices, the accreted wisdom of thousands of years, can literally reshape, transform ourselves, starting with our brains, connecting with our behaviors, and hopefully changing the world around us one breath at a time. Um, it's coming up to six o'clock. I don't want to run over and get between you and dinner, but uh, there are a few questions here that we didn't get to. And of course, uh, there probably are more questions as you uh, have listened to all our distinguished panelists. What I would suggest is that you catch them uh, in the evening, you catch them tomorrow when they're around and they're available and they're so gracious, talk to them. Get some sense of uh, what you are mulling over. Have a conversation. And uh, thank you all for attending and thank you to all of the panelists for your time and, and for sharing. Thank, thank you. you.